All right, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find the dopest people that do the dopest stuff. And it's very interesting because um, today's guest has been uh, educating me, and I was just sharing with you. I don't think we've had. Um, let me let me let me back it up. Let me think. Let me think. I don't know if we've ever had a techie on the show. Someone that's like built and sold an app. For sure, no one has built and sold nothing. Right, right, right. Tech, technology based, but um, yeah, you're definitely the first um, app developer. Maybe. Ooh, I'll be mad if somebody be like, "Yo, I did it." But I anyway, was on, I was on that joint before that. Oh, for sure. But you're the first person to teach me because this was uh, maybe a year ago. Yeah. A year, year, yeah, about a year ago, um, we sat down. Shout out to Marco Russell. Um, he connected us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, shout out to Mark Well, man. Yeah, That's my boy. Yeah, shout out to Mark Well. But yeah. for those that don't know, uh, it, like, introduce yourself to the people so we can get this thing going, because I got mad questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, everybody? I'm Justin Burrs. I'm the founder of Maestro, which is an online course platform. Uh, I've actually, interestingly enough, been in the tech space only for the past eight years. Yeah. yeah. Only? That's a long only time, eight bro. eight years, yeah. I mean, I've only been a full-time entrepreneur for nine nine. Yeah. Full-time yeah, entrepreneur for nine years. But see, what you got to understand is, like, a lot of people who are in this field of technology, like, developing software, doing those things, like, they've been in the game for, I found, you know, most of their life, or mm. they went through college, and they have some level, even if they dropped out of college, they've had some level of experience. Me, I just kind of got into it about eight years ago. Mm. So when you say you got into what were you doing before? So first of all, I'm going to fast forward, then we'll rewind. Yeah. Um, give me some of the stuff you did in the space, because you built, you built two, you sold both of them. You sold two apps that you developed, right? Well, I sold one. You sold one so I app sold that you one, and I currently have Maestro. You currently have yeah. Maestro. It was something else you were telling me that you developed, where or it was a part of the other software. Yeah. So we so we actually before that, well, you call them apps, right? <laughs> That's what most I don't people, know, bro. No, I'm just out here. bro. Most people call them apps. It's right. like really what I do is called it's called SaaS. So it's called software as a service. So most people know what is software. Apps are the things that are on your phone. Gotcha. I mostly deal in like the you know what we call like the cloud computing space, which is mostly you know like uh, where people use these apps on their desktop computers. You could use them on your phone, but mostly they're, they're known as software as a service. Gotcha. Software as a service. Yeah. So it's a software that serves who, whatever client. Yeah, whatever market you want. Us, yeah. we serve, you know, uh, we serve like small business owners right, mostly right. who use like, we, we're mostly like a marketing kind of software technology. So gotcha, gotcha. So for one, I don't feel like I have the brain for it. You know what I mean? Like right. stuff don't compute, no pun intended. It doesn't compute with me like <laughs> right, that. Like right. when you, you start talking about the nanotechs and putting all this stuff together. So have you always been, even before you started this field of study, were you always like kind of like the technological person? Bro, no, no, that wasn't that wasn't me. No? <laughs> no, man. Where, where I actually started is interesting, man. Like, you know, I always tell people like most people when 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 you get out of co when you get out of high school, right? Most people in high school, it's like you're trying to define your life story. You know, you go, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be all these things. Me, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I ain't even go front. I, I mean, and I, and I didn't want to force it either. Like, that was the thing. Like, I didn't want to force it. Uh, I didn't want to put myself in a position because I saw so many people doing things that they really didn't want to do with their life. So uh, in that regards, I didn't realize at the time I was, like, making a really good decision, kind of waiting. Right. Um, and so fast forward, I kind of worked a bunch of jobs, hopping from this job to that job. Mm -hmm. You know, my friends used to make best. They used to say, we're going to see when Justin going to get fired again. Really? That was, yeah, that was me, man. Like, you were I, that was guy. That, I was that guy. Horrible employee, everything. That was me, bro. Mm -hmm. um, and I was hopping. I mean, I didn't even have, you know, some people, they go into a field and they stay in that field. Yeah. Bro, I was just hopping around, whatever, whoever, <laughs> man, whoever gave me a job, mm -hmm. I was, that was official for me. Like, that was like, I was just in, I was like, okay, pay how much? Okay, I don't care what it is, we gonna do it. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, and and so what happened is, is um, I remember I was a loan officer, I don't know how I got, I was fired about a month after that, I couldn't survive that game. Uh, Did you go to college? <laughs> no, I didn't. 
No, you go to college. I didn't. You didn't I went try to, to go to college. I, you know what? Here's the thing. I always tell people, like, you know how some people say, man, I didn't go to college because I couldn't get the funding. This is a true story. I didn't go to college because I didn't think I was smart enough to go to college. Mm. That's how bad it was for me. I didn't think I was good enough to go to college. So I didn't even try. Like, most, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even try to get the loads. It wasn't. And my mom, she was pushing me to go, hey, you need to go do something with your life. And I was like, I just don't feel compelled to, you know, get all these loans because I don't even know what I want to do with my life. Mm. Right. And so fast forward. What happened is, is I was fired from this job. I was fired from this job, I was fired from this job. And then I landed in this sales job that really just shifted the whole thing for me. Right. Uh, you know, and I met this dude named Mike, right? Shout out to Mike, man. I'm going to send Mike mm -hmm. this. But Mike was like my greatest mentor, right? He was this really cool, old school black dude, walked around, you know, with this, like he, he was just on it. He was one of the greatest salespeople I had ever met in my life. Mm. Where and were you working at this point? This was a company called USA. It was a cell phone company. Cell phone USA. company. Gotcha. How old yeah, were you? Yeah. And at the time I was 20. Yeah, I was probably about 20. Gotcha. Okay. I was 20. So I was, you know, I was just young. He was like, look, I'm going to give you a chance. He said, you're going to be selling cell phones. And I didn't know, again, I just got the job because it was paying. He right, said, right. he's like, commissions. That was the first time I literally heard commit the word commission. The word commission. The word commission. I was like, what is that? Oh, okay, if I make some side money, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what commission meant for me mm -hmm. was you actually make some side money. Mm -hmm. But I was I just wanted the alley. That's what my mind was at. My mindset was at the time. So I got this job, and he sat me in the office. He said, Justin, I want to tell you something. He said, come here, come here, come here. Because, you know, you young, man. You, 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 your mind is still young and you ain't set in your ways yet. He said, I want to bring you outside. He brought me outside. It was a sales floor. And it was probably about 50 people in the store. And he said, man, this is one of the busiest stores in the country. And he said, but I'm going to tell you something. Most people are lazy. He said, I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody. But most people don't want it bad enough. And he said, if I can instill that in you, if I can instill in you the, the, not just the hustle, but the strategy of knowing how to move, mm -hmm. knowing how to get it, knowing how to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And I hadn't had a man up until that point because my father was absent in my life. I didn't have a man speak to me like that. Wow. So for me, it was like speaking to my soul wow. on a deep level. And even though I hadn't heard it, you know, we all feel that gut level. It was like this gut feeling that was speaking directly to me at the time. Mm. And I felt it, man. And I was like, let's get it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? So, so before for, this, you, like, there was no, much, like, ambition. There was no ambition. I mean, well, well let me take that back. I'm going to take that back. Because I did used to uh, work at Best Buy. That was one of my other jobs. Mm -hmm. And I kind of realized the ambition Selling speakers, man. Mm -hmm. Like, they put me in a car department. I don't know what I was back there doing. Right. Because I didn't know how to hook up really a lot of speakers. Mm -hmm. But I knew how to sell them. But I was okay right, right. at the time. Right? So I would get these speakers and I would resell them uh, because they would just give them to me. Right? They would just give, the would just give us the speakers. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the boss at the time was cool. He's like, yeah, you, could, you guys could take them, whatever. So we would take them and I would resell them. When I would resell them, my mom was like, what are you doing? Like, I was probably about, what was I, 16? Mm -hmm. And I was making about an extra four grand a month mm -hmm. just doing that. Dang. Yeah, I was making more on my, I was actually making more selling the speakers than I was hourly. I think I was only making like 1200 a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. But I was making like four grand a month selling these speakers. So that's kind of where I realized ambition. But see, the thing is, before I even got into entrepreneurship, I hadn't even seen an example mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to label it. I didn't know what it what it looked like, yeah. right? So anyway, fast forward to to Mike, man. This is where I experienced a level of success. And, and he was and he was he worked there too. Yeah, he was the manager. He was the manager. Yeah, he was the one who gave me. No, they, look, the other people didn't want to hire me. Right, he gave right. me. He just he saw something in me mm -hmm. that I didn't see in myself, yeah. right? And so for me, I'm sitting there. And I'm like, why is this man giving me this job? I suck at job. Let's see how, you know, I, I was counting out the time too. Like, how long am I going to have this thing? Mm -hmm. um, but I always took his words, and he always taught me this. He said, Justin, when is the last time you read a book? And I said, man, school, that's when you're supposed to read right, books, right. right? Naive. He said, man, self-education is what's going to make you rich and wealthy. And also, 
even if you work in a regular nine to five, it's gonna make you higher up. It's gonna help you develop skill sets that's gonna make you more money. And this is Mike talking. This is Mike talking. So hold on. so he's did he accomplish some level of success or yeah, he's just like Yeah, Mike was that dude, man. Mike the came, manager at the cell phone company. He, man, Mike was making six figures at that job. Oh. You know, he was he was and before that he had been in the sales industry for a while. Mm. And see, I didn't understand sales at the time. I didn't understand the psychology of sales. And and so I went to the library the next day and I got a Jim Rohn book, right? Oh, it and changed you, my life. Bro. Changed my life. Which one? Bro. The Four Seasons? The Four Seasons. Four Seasons Life. Yeah. And I and I remember, man, um, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. Mm. So I saw the cassette joint. We still had to, you know, to see you, not, you sound old now, yeah, right? right? Like right. you're like, dang, they used to be a cassette player, right? Man. So I, I saw the cassette player, I mean cassette uh tapes at the library, man. So I rented them. I had an old school cassette player in the drawer at the crib. So I went to the house, grabbed it, and I started listening to it, man, every day. And I started doing exactly what he told me to do, man. And out of that position, from commission, I became the number one sales person in that organization really? for three years straight. Wow. Yeah. And and I was 19. And li- listen, my mother never made over $25,000 in a year taking care of two kids, mm. right? I was making $15,000 a month selling cell phones. Dang. Absolutely crazy, man. So it... It, it completely shifted my paradigm. It changed my level of thinking. And it just showed, I was like, here's this kid without a college degree. Never, barely made it. Grew up on the south side of Chicago, right? Who, who came from a really, like, bad environment, right? Like, came from a really, really bad environment. I couldn't believe I was making this money. But Mike didn't stop there. Mike started teaching me the game, man. He was one of my greatest mentors, man, and, wow. and, and, and teaching me a lot of stuff. Do you still talk to Mike now? I haven't talked to Mike in a minute, man. Hit up Mike, man. I gotta hit up Mike, it's man. Like you owe him dinner or something, bro. Man, I, I gotta. I owe. I owe Mike a lot, man. It was. He was. He was a great mentor to me. He was one of the the, the mentors who really spoke into me. And that's the thing, man. And I always tell people this: like, I was coachable, though. I'm yeah. pretty sure Mike had told that game to a lot of people because yeah. he was that type of dude. He was an open, giving dude. But for me, I hadn't had mentorship. I hadn't seen that. I hadn't taught, had somebody who cared enough about me to say, hey, you need to go grab this book. It's going to change your life right. years down the road and just invest in yourself. Mm. So how long did you work there at the cell phone store? I was about three years. Did you learn tech stuff there? No, not at all. I'm <laughs> waiting for the time like, where you have an advantage <laughs> over me, man, because I just don't get this stuff, man. Hey, man. I always tell people, the story is always interested in how I built a tech company because I didn't do it the traditional way. I'm not your cut. I'm like when people like talk to me now, they hear the tech talk, but I'm also able to relate because that's not my background. Right, right, I sure. just understand it enough to have a company now, right? Because I dedicated myself to the craft. Mm-hmm. I dedicated myself years of study. And that's what most people don't understand. See, when you when you have something you want to focus on, it could be tech. Yeah. It could be you, like we look at these guys like Elon Musk my boy, like learning from them. But like, that's what they did for years, man. They, they, they were so focused for so many years on their craft that it became an obsession. So that's what it became for me, right? Um, right so, th- so three years, cell phone company, then what? So after, so here's what happened. I got fired from that job eventually. Did Mike fire you? No, man. Mike ain't do me like oh, that. I was about to say, that's why you ain't talking to so him. Let, let you go. Like, I'm like, man, no, let's stop talking about Mike now. No, no Mike ain't do me like that. Uh, it was just, you know, the company has sold and they made a lot of changes, as company do, and, and it gets you uncomfortable. But here's what happened. I met this guy who I so actually enough sold a cell phone to. And I call it, like, the destiny moment. See, we all have this destiny moment. We all have it. You could be, you know, in line somewhere talking to somebody. Somebody mentions something about an opportunity, and you have two op- you have two options. Your skepticism radar goes up, which it all does for us. Or this, what I call this intuition thing, comes up, right? Mm. Where it's a mixture of them both, and that's what people don't understand about intuition is that usually intuition is mixed with that. There's a level of fear, skepticism all in there. They looking for, you know, the, the skies to part yeah. before they go, man, I'm supposed to be doing real estate. Man, I'm supposed to be doing this opportunity. 
See, for me, it was just like, oh, opportunity, let's go. Like, yeah. you know, so he, so he was telling me about this thing. I was sitting there at my computer, my workstation, had my uniform on, mm-hmm. and he said, hey, man, this thing is the internet. You need to look into it. What year is this? This is probably, I don't know what year it was. It had to be 2007. It had to be 2007. How old are you now, Justin? 34. You're 34. Okay, 34. got you, got you. So yeah. about 07, yeah. this internet thing. This internet thing. All I heard was the internet. And I mean, I knew the internet. I mean, we had MySpace back then. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you remember MySpace? We Facebook had. Facebook was lit. I don't know if you can get in Facebook, though. I couldn't get it. I didn't go to college. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. they let me in that Right, joint. right, right. But, but black, you know, uh, Black Planet, oh, MySpace, the memories now, man. So, you know, he, here's the thing, right? So, so he said, the internet, he said, here's the thing. I'm doing this thing called social media. And I'm selling these packages to social media, to people on, you know, in these companies. But I'm also selling these products on eBay and I'm selling all these different products online. What were the packages he was selling? He was just teaching people how to basically, see, at them times, in 2008 or 2007, all you had to do was say you was a social media consultant and you got paid. You got cut. You got a check cut. Really? Yeah, because companies didn't understand what the internet and what social media was. Nobody Mm. really understood it. So when you said like, hey, I'm a Facebook consultant back in those days, you just got cut a check if you knew how to sell yourself. Interesting. Yeah. So, so that was he, a little market. That was that a little was, lame. That was a little lame. You know what? Now that I think about it, because um, there were people back then that were building MySpace pages for you. Right? Yeah. And yeah. Well, I guess it never stopped because some people will run your Instagram and things of that nature. So yeah, it's it's still it's it's just more common. But see, back yeah. in the day. It's kind of like if you were to get into Bitcoin years and years ago, mm. right? Or you got into the tech space years ago. I mean, it's still a good, opp- both of them still got good opportunities. But if you was the first one in there, it's like, man, I just want to pay you for like, just show yeah, me the game. Sure. So that's how a lot of companies were doing. So when I heard that, he was like, man, you can make money online. You can sell digital products. He was just giving me the game sitting there. And I don't know why. I don't know. Because I, I had people like do this, hey, go mm-hmm. real estate. Um, and nothing really perked up. But when I heard the internet, he said something that changed my life. He said, here's the thing with the internet, Justin, you can make money while you sleep and you can, and people from all over the world can buy your programs and products. Mm. And I don't know why he said, and he said, he said, there's people in Australia buying products from me. You ain't got to be a local based business. He said, you can literally have products and sales coming in like this every single day from the internet. You could sell a wide variety of things. So what was he selling at that point? At the time, I mean, at the time, I didn't believe, I was like, I thought he was pushing weight on the internet, right? (laughs) (laughs) But, but like for me, uh, he said he was selling these things called eBooks. Which are digital he programs. He was in the ebook game. He was in the ebook game what, in 07? In 07. Yeah. It, he was he was selling ebooks in 07. Cause back in, in 2007, um, you know, video was really hard to kind of come by, right? Yeah. Like you can have video trainings, but you had to pay you had to pay arm and leg for cameras of like 10 yeah. grand. Like if you had a if you had a video course, you was cool. But most back in the day it was cool if you had an audio course. Or if you had you just recording like you right. you know with just the ebooks, so he was selling ebooks, and I said, "I e what?" <laughs> like Dang. I didn't even I was I I hadn't outside of MySpace and and Black Planet like I really didn't do anything on internet. I ain't even purchased anything on internet. That's how much like I was like not like I didn't understand any of these things. Do, do you remember who that is now? I wonder where he's at today. No, we still talk. Yeah, really? yeah. Shout out lit? to Brad, my man Brad. Yeah, yeah. He he still does internet things, man. But he he's wow. the first one who showed me. And so what happened is, is he gave me this opportunity. He said, look, um, I remember, actually, what happened is I got fired from my job, right? So, <laughs> of course. So, of course. I, of right, course. Right. It, was, it was inevitable. <laughs> he said, man, you ever thought about kind of like you would work for yourself, but before you do that, you should transition into something else. So I got this company out in California. We're actually selling these social media packages. I could teach you everything. Now, here's the caveat, though. He's like, we ain't got a lot of money. We just a startup. Mm. (laughs) So I'm like. That was his company? That was his company. So I was like, bet. I don't like. I was like, I was like, I was like, will I ever get paid? He was like, (laughs) (laughs) I I just want to know, was the check going to be cut eventually? Um, And he said, yeah, man, we, we will eventually pay you, you know, with this look. We're just a startup. We're getting started. 
So I remember I called my mother and I was like, Ma, is this because you know I don't know any better, right? Yeah. I was like, you know, sometimes you tell your people they you thinking they about to be excited. Yeah, you like they don't they do not <laughs> at all be excited. Hey, so man, I, what are you talking about, bro? First right, off, go get a job. Right, first Keep a off, job, do that. First off, bro, this is a scam. <laughs> right. Get it together. Right. Um, and so that's kind of what happened, right? Like she was just and and, and shout out to moms, you know, she was uh, one of my greatest supporters at the time, but she was just being like, you know what any loving mom would do, right? She was just like, you need something stable. You need, I don't want to see you, you know, fail. I don't want to see you. So all those fears kicked in. And again, like I said before, you have this level of that's called intuition. And then you have the skepticism radar, right? And so for me though, it was this intuition because I couldn't, for, for some reason, man, I was sitting in the bed and I would obsess and I could not stop thinking about this thing called the internet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, at the time it was really the wild, wild west. It's still the wild, wild west sure. today. But at the time it was really the wild, wild west. And I was like, I was obsessed. I, and, and it was like the first time in my life, because up until that point, I hadn't said I want to be a police officer or an attorney or do this. It was the first time in my life that I felt connected to something and excited about something. Mm. The first time. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it, man. So I would go on the internet, I would research all this stuff, and I just told my mom, I said, look, um, I'm gonna make this, this decision to get on this plane and go work at this startup company. And she was just so sad. She's like, I want you to go to college. And she meant well. Yeah. But my destiny was just way, way bigger. And at the time it was scary. Cause I, I was the first, I was the first person in my family to do that. Yeah. And it was the scariest moment in my life. And I'll never forget it. I had anxiety, I had panic attacks. I didn't know what I was gonna do. What, what, they wanted you to fly. Where were you living at this point? I was in Chicago. In Chicago. I was, yeah, I had, a, I had a small little $700 a month apartment mm -hmm. on the south side of Chicago. Uh, Did and, you have to move to Silicon Valley? And it wasn't even Silicon Valley. It was in San Diego, man. Gotcha. San Diego, yeah. But he was like, "Yo, I got a, I got a bed for you in a small room, you know." So were they offering any like any compensation up front? Or? Man, nothing, nothing. I had to get, I had to fly my way out there. I, it was, it was, it was, it was rough. First, one, the audacity of him to ask someone to just fly out in hopes that you make some money, right? But. Shouts out to him because he was still building his company. It's just, you know, he believed in it, so you believed in it. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 what happened from there is, man, it, it actually ended up working out because months later we had got a big contract. I got paid out of that. Um months later? Months later. Yeah. I had to it took, so there's it took a, a couple months. There's a period. There's a little there's a little How did you eat? How did you you know, I had a look, I had a, it didn't take, you know, look, bro, I'm from the South Side of Chicago. Okay, so, nice. well, you know, I had a couple dollars, you right, know, how right, you, right. You, you know, you say, hey man, I got a couple dollars. I know how to get, but you know, I, I, I watch mines. I know how to get by. And at the time I didn't have any kids. I didn't mm -hmm. have a wife. So for me, I just knew how to, you know, survive. And, gotcha. and I don't know, man, I felt this like gut thing inside of me that was like, mm -hmm. man, something is about to, to happen, man. It's about to go crazy. So yeah. You know, let me ask you about that feeling, man, because there's a lot of people who have that feeling, but they have that feeling about something different every couple of months. Mm -hmm. Right. So how would you say you differentiate that? Like, cause you felt like you just felt something. You're just laying awake at night and it's like, golly, I just, yeah. this internet thing is stalking me right now, <laughs> stalking my dreams. Yeah. Um, what do you say to the people who they might have that feeling, but that feeling continues to change? Can you describe? Yeah, I like? think I think, man, like you're gonna have that feeling about multiple things, right? It, it's really the focus that's going to take you there. Mm -hmm. And you, when you get obsessed about something, like when you get obsessed about that one thing and you tune everything out, right? You start to look at that thing very, very differently. So for me, that's what happened. Honestly, for me, I bounced around from thing to thing for years until I found the tech space. So for me, I didn't just like, oh, we built this social media company and I went up. Right, I'm right. success. Mm -hmm. That's not what happened. Um, I mean, from there, like my mom, what happened is my mom had got really sick mm -hmm. and I had to come back to Chicago and take care of her. So, um, you know, my man gave me a little bit of, you know, cash. He was very mm -hmm. fair about it. Uh, but I was on my own after that. And so I had built all these relationships in California. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna try to make some money. I got some money to hold me over for the next six months. So I started 
really trying my hand in everything. While you're back in Chicago. While I'm back in Chicago. Why couldn't you work for the company remotely from Chicago? Um, because at the time there was some, you know, differences with the partners with what they were doing. Cause I didn't own any of the company. Right, right. So, you know, they were going to probably go in another direction, you know, real, real soon. Gotcha, gotcha. So I wanted to do at the time I was seeing all this stuff. I'm like, okay, it's time for me to kind of venture out and really do my own thing. And that was like a year later. And so I started, right. man, I started learning this thing called affiliate marketing where I'm selling other people's products. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was just doing Everything. That's man. interesting though, because you got introduced to like a, the ebook space, and now that you under, now that you're in it, it's probably now you see all these opportunities where you can be an affiliate. Yeah, yeah. But if you're if you're blind, so if you're not like exposed to certain things, you don't even know that there's opportunities. In yeah. That. That's yeah. why I, I think the most important thing we can have is associations and environment, bro. But you gotta. Here's the thing I always tell people, man. Experiences is the new currency. Mm. experience is the new currency see we view like we got to make money as a new currency for me it's opportunity you know like mm. even me like for example recently i just moved to atl right? right i had to get out of my old environment because in chicago i, I have a really close-knit family we're all close we're always together and it was real hard to leave that environment it was mm. hard you know but i told i had to tell my moms i had, to, I had a conversation with my nieces and nephews i had a conversation with my sister this isn't about me moving away from you guys. I'm only two hours away. This is about me getting out my comfort zone so I can have experiences. Yeah. Because Why is it hard to leave, though? I mean, I mean you, you have you you left already. You went to California. When I was that, I, I was going back and forth to Chicago, so I hadn't officially moved to California. Got you. Got yeah. you. I think, man. I think, man. The hardest thing, man, is comfort zones. Yeah. When you get that's 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 what stops a lot of people from their dreams, from going after the things they want, 100%. right? It's comfort zones. You get comfortable. See, when you uncomfortable, man, I don't feel good. Right. So you know you what your body and your mind and everything tries to do is you try to snap back and go back to reality because you want to experience comfort. Mm. We all want to as humans. We love comfort, yeah. right? So when you do something different, like you move to a new city, it's scary, man, because you completely doing something different. For some people, it's easy, but for a lot of people, if you grew up in a certain environment, you have roots there, you have, you know, all these things, it becomes harder. Yeah. So for me, even like so much opportunity has opened up, even me moving out to, you know, Atlanta. So, yeah. so you're in, you're in uh, Chicago, then mm -hmm. you decide to move to Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, but that was that was years later, man. Years that was later. years later. So, yeah. so in Chicago, is that when you built your first SAS? What is SAS. it? SaaS. SAS. Sauce as a service? No, <laughs> systems as a service. Software. Software, as, Software a service. as a service. So it's SAS. S A A S. Okay, gotcha. Got so you. people just you know Software in in the industry, gotcha. it's called SAS. Yeah. Gotcha. So you came back. You're doing affiliate marketing. Yeah. Making money? Not making money. So I probably didn't make money. I, I had. I had really took a lot. I, I was really good at saving some money. I didn't really. I was. I was. You know. I like to say I was a little cheap. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. So I like frugal. to frugal. That's frugal the word man. I was looking for. Yeah. There we go. That sounds better. <laughs> frugal. So I was. I was frugal, right? So I can. You know. I knew how to like basically stretch money for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. So you know, for me, I was just. I was trying to find like my thing, my thing, my thing, my thing, and I think. I didn't find my thing really until I really changed my mindset because I started to get so dialed in when I started to go through a lot of personal growth. I started to read a lot of books. I started to mm. really take it serious. Right. Not like, cause I was kind of, I would read a book, like some of us, you know, we right. download Audible, we get the For credits. Sure. We download the Audible credits. We watch fire podcasts like this. Right, right, right. We come sure. back. But, you know, it's like you'll watch it, then you come back a couple months later, life that got busy. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, no, no, no. I got to commit. Like, I got to go. I got to be so obsessed with this thing. Mm -hmm. I got to do this every single day of my life in order to change my thinking. Because I realized I had been so, we, we all are. We're all programmed with trauma. We all have money beliefs. We all have um, business beliefs. We all have those things. So for me, I had to figure all that out. And so I'm in... You know, I'm sitting at my computer, man, every day, trying to make it happen, just trying to figure it out. Um, and I get this letter in the mail because at the time, you know, when I came back, I had, I was able to get another place, but I had purchased a place because I had some, you know, I had some money. I'm thinking, right, right. oh, I can just go back to my regular ways. Sure. And I get this 
letter in the mail. This was probably about six months in that said, hey, we're foreclosing. And I knew I was late, but we for, we're foreclosing on your property. Mm. Um, and that's the, man, nobody want to get that. Nope. Man, you, like, that's the worst. That is the worst thing, man. It takes the wind out of you. Man, especially like, if you, if you like, especially in a position where you like, you have a, your, your development of mindset, your own personal development, and you're like, oh, yeah. yes, it's, it's going to get better. Then life says, hey, slow down. Like, slow, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and for me, that was the real, real. At the time, I was like, I don't need to slow down. I've been, like, working. Like, right, what right. am I slowing down? Like, it, and, and so, man, it took, it took so, it, it was so demotivating mm. to even experience that. And I couldn't call people, you know, my family, because they didn't know. They was like, they would just say, get a job, like, yeah, right. you know. So I was kind of, I, I call this thing, man, like, uh, I heard Tony Robbins say this at an event, right? He said, sometimes you got to burn the boats, right? Right? You know, when you when you you set sail somewhere and you get on this island and it's like, you got to, you, you it's like, are you going to take the island? Are you going to burn the boats? And I remember hearing that. I just didn't know what the hell it meant. But sitting yeah. in this situation, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm burning the boats. Like, mm-hmm. I have very little money in the bank. I'm in this foreclosure situation. So now I have to develop. I have to be self-reliant, mm-hmm. right? One of my favorite books, right? And, and it was the book to change really my life about who I was as a person, right? Mm-hmm. The 50 of Law by 50 Cent and Robert Greene. Really? I heard it is a really good book. I haven't heard it. I Man, I've read, read that book 14 times. Really? It's that powerful. Because there's so much gold in that book that talks about self-reliance and the mindset that you need to develop in so many facets of life. And I would, I still, even to this day, like I got, I got that, that whole audio book on my phone. What did you get from it? Give me, give me some, give me some, some principles from it. From the book. Yeah, so like one of them is mastery, um, self-mastery. And it's not like, it wasn't just motivation, it was practicality. So here's what I mean. We hear mastery is you gotta learn your craft and all this other motivational Mm -hmm. stuff. In that book, he talked about what it really meant to what mastery actually meant. So he used all these different people, these examples like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, like mastery, it has a lot of anxiety that comes with it. But the people who want power, because we all are really out for power, people hate that word but we all want power. We all, to some level of a degree, want some power over some area of our life. For sure. Right? You For know, sure. not power in a sense of like, you know, the, the egotistical right, power. Because right. when people hear power, they think I'm talking about egotistical, but right, we're talking right. about power over something, power but over you money. Want, you want to take, you want to take power over something in your life. Whether, exactly. You know, I want to take power, like, let's say for, you're the type of person who you get a paycheck, and by the time you're getting another paycheck, you have spent the other paycheck and you don't know where it all went. Yeah. And it gets so out of control yep. that you just want to take power over your finances and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to get a handle on it. Yep. And we just don't know how to. Yeah, we I don't. Like that. So, so one of the p- points that he was talking about, you know, you have to have self-reliance, but there's this period uh, and he calls it, that the most successful people in life, this is the thing I, the most thing I took from it, the most successful people in life know how to experience boredom. Like they know how to deal with boredom. Mm. Like, so meaning like, you know, as humans, like we got to always be going out on a Saturday night. Like, and I used to be like that. We have to be doing something. I got to be, you know, I got to go out with somebody. I got to go to the movies. I got to do something. But we've been, um, and this may not be a popular opinion, but we've been taught like, this thing of entertainment. We always have to be entertained. We always got to be on our phones, mm. right? But when you study the most successful business owners and the most successful people in history, sometimes they went through years of boredom, meaning just studying this, you know, this area of a mastery. Mm. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Cause we, we wind up filling our time with nonsense when we get bored. Yeah. And then you look up and 10 years to pass by, you like, man, what the hell I've been doing the last 10 Dang, years? I never even thought about mastering boredom. You have to master boredom. You, and that was the thing that changed my life is that I had to be comfortable with boredom because see, boredom is not just, see, boredom, what people don't realize about boredom is boredom is their greatest ally and they don't even know it. See, what it does is it shuts your mind down from focusing on all these things like social media is great, 
but it can become a distraction. Yeah, for sure. Right? So the, the biggest thing is, on, what here's what I realized even about entrepreneurship that I learned over the years, is if I could just be bored for years, right? It doesn't mean I don't go out. doesn't mean I don't, you, like, live life. Like, right, I ain't right, saying right. don't go live life. I live life. I travel. I live life. Mm -hmm. But I realize that there are going to be times where I have to be bored. And so this is actually a good segue for the tech stuff for because sure. um, it's actually how, once I learned that principle, it set up my mind that, okay, I can master anything now. Mm -hmm. I just have to be uncomfortable with boredom. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're getting foreclosed. How do we get into this tech space? So, so what happened is, is, is like, I remember like getting this letter. And so I realized that I had to master skill sets. Because at the time, um, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, they have shiny object syndrome. Right. Right. That's their thing. They doing this, they doing that. So I realized like, I get okay. that sometimes. Like, we, dude, we. <laughs> I don't care. Like, man, most of us just can't escape it, man. Golly. You're right about that. You're it's right hard, man. That. It's here's the I thing. Maybe it comes from boredom. It like comes you from have boredom. something, you have something rolling yep. and it just becomes kind of mundane. Yep. And instead of taking it to the next level, you feel bored, so you do something else and you never really get to that next level. Yeah. But see, that next level is right after that boredom period. Right. If you manage it if correctly. If you manage it correctly, correct. You have to manage it correctly. But see, that's the currency, man. See, that's the real currency is when you're able to get past that. See, I think a, a lot of people are afraid of that because, see, when you approach, say you approach anything, real estate, whatever, you have a lot of anxiety. That's really boredom because it's something new. Mm -hmm. But after a while, if you just stick with it, what happens is, is you start to get good at it. Yeah. You get good. And it ain't, it ain't no special day. It don't come wrapped in a bowl three weeks right. later. It's just, it takes a period of time and yeah. people don't are uncomfortable with that. So realizing this, here's what happened. I realized I had to sell. And so I remember I seen this Facebook ad. This is what changed my life. I seen this Facebook ad and it was talking about your business is experiencing up and down income. And it was from this guy, right? And I remember reaching out to this dude. I clicked this ad. I reach out to this dude. Hold on a second. Yo, is this camera recording? You sure? I don't see it red on the screen. You're sure? Yeah, this is 38 minutes, 10 seconds, and then. I got nervous. Because normally it's on the yeah, display screen. Yeah, we had the whole, the whole thing. Oh, I was about to say, oh, my gosh. Like, oh, my okay. God. No, no, no. He could. Okay. I'm sorry. Let's I might got to repeat all that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, go for it. I'm sorry. So where do where, where you want me to pick up? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so um, like, getting into the tech space where you... You're you're uh, you're about to walk into this your own. Yeah. So so basically, I always tell people like the hardest moments is where you meet your destiny, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, like I click on this ad, I start going. I bought this course at the time. I didn't really understand like online courses, digital mm -hmm. programs, but I go through this program. Like, look, I gotta make this like ish happen. Like, I have no choice. Course? It was all about like how to sell. I forgot who it was by. But it was like how to how to do how to sell your services, how to sell mm -hmm. programs, right? Um, and at the time, I've been like, I was like, I, I got to make this work because mm -hmm. if not, my house gonna be sold off. Right. And here's what happened, man. Like I went through boredom. I didn't go out. I literally sat in that. I sat in that computer, and I watched that course. I went through it, and I started experiencing this transformation of me as a man. I started mm. to realize who I was. I started to, I had to face my demons. I had to literally come close to the things that I wasn't good at, wow. right? And so I remember, man, now I had to take action. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Right, right. But now I got to make some money, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have to actually do this thing. So I start uh, selling these things called copy. I had mastered this skill called copyright. So for those of you that don't know what copywriting is, it's the art of really like what you see on websites, what you see everywhere, advertisements. Yeah. They all have what's called copy in them, right? right? It's the persuasion of words. It's the ability to persuade somebody to want to opt into your website or buy your program. Right. We all need it. We all want it. So I said to myself, this is a skill set that can make me money for years. So I'm a master of this. That was the, and I said, I'm gonna tune everything else out. I ain't gonna go for the, the when I see them, ad, them other ads, I ain't mm -hmm. gonna click them. Right. I'm gonna stay focused on this. So what happened is, so I I, I, right, at this point, your idea is to be a copywriter. 
copywriter. Where I'm just going to yeah. write in, in, like you said, on a website. People put a, put a lot into that. It's not just, here's why you need to buy it, buy it. There's like word and language. Yeah, and you have to learn a lot. Broken up and yeah. all that. Yeah, it's a skill set. It wasn't just, oh, I'm good at all, I'm all right. Like you had to learn certain words and how they make people feel, how the languaging is. Like, and I, again, man, I barely made it out of high school. So it was hard for me bro, right. to learn all of this. Uh, but I learned it. And now next I had to go sell myself. So I, what I started doing is I started learning how to put up my own ads. And back in the day, it's 2008, so I was like, advertiser, what is this? Mm -hmm. So, but I had learned a lot from this course. And so I met this guy and he wanted to hire me as he said, look, I know you're selling some of your other stuff, but I'm gonna pay you a pretty good way for you to exclusively be a consultant with me. Mm. And you could consult me on our copy. And that changed, mm. that changed my life. Now here's the thing, guess what he owned? A tech a technology. Company. Got <laughs> it. Got it. Yo, that's and I and I, I truly believe once you set your mind on something and like you have a passion for it, things get out of your way for you to walk the path toward that. Yeah, man. All of them, you know, if you ever see that picture where it says success and they got all these turns yeah. and so that's really what success is. 100%. But then you get to a point well, you get so dialed in that nobody can, like your mind is so dialed in, you are so dialed in, your spirit, your soul, everything is just focused on this one thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what separates everybody else who's just out there trying to figure it out. Right. Uh, and that's why they never master anything, right? So, but here's the thing though. I had actually sold him. I said, listen, because of what the skill sets I learned from this course, I sold him. I said, look, that's great. But if you want me exclusively, here's what we have to do. You have to give me 90 days up front, and I'm going to tell you why you're going to do it. Okay. And this time, I start getting my confidence, right? 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're swaggy right <laughs> I'm now. I'm swaggy right now, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I was like, look, you got to give me mm. three months. I'm drinking too fast. Don't choke on camera, Dave. Don't choke on camera, Don't choke on camera. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, you know, I said, you got to, like, you got to give me three months in advance. I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to make an offer on my place to get my place out of foreclosure. Mm. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to have other clients, so it can't be exclusive with you. So I started literally lining up sales appointments right after that. And because I said, I have to make this happen. I have no other option. See, some of us have options. That's why we get comfortable. Yeah. See, I had no other option. Mm. And I wasn't about to lose the place that I had worked so hard for in my life. So I said, look, Justin, you're going to have to either man up and do this. You're going to have to master yourself enough to make this happen, or you're going to go under. Which option is it? Mm. So I sat at that desk, and all I had was my cell phone. That was my prepaid T-Mobile joint, 50 <laughs> bucks a month. That's don't all call, I had. Don't call me before 7. Right. <laughs> don't, call, don't call me before 7. Right. And my computer, which was uh, at the time, you know, um, a white old MacBook that my friend handed down to me. That's all I had mm -hmm. at the time. And I got on that phone, I closed four deals and I made $20,000 in a week. Wow. And it changed my life. And I mean, yeah, I had made some money, but I had never, you know, I had made, you know, six figures in my, but that was Uncle Sam took half of that. Right, right, right. This was like, I made this on my own, wow. in my own business, doing my own thing, not selling, not working for another company. I did it for me. And so I don't know why. That so, gave you the three months up front. That get, yeah, and he gave me the three months. So I had made 20K plus the three Damn. months up front. So I'm feeling myself. I got money in the bank. Oh, you lit. I'm, I'm, I'm lit, right? And, and so here's what I did. I, I didn't stop. I didn't stop the, the, the swag. Mm -hmm. I just said, I'm feeling good. I called up the bank. And so my friend was like, you got to get an attorney, all of this. I said, no, no, no. Let me, let me try something. Called the bank. An attorney in for the middle what? For, like, because I was in foreclosure. So, oh, you know, right, right, trying right. to get me, trying to count me, get, get oh, me gotcha. caught back up. Mm -hmm. Right? So I said, no, no, no. Let me call him. Let me try to work something out. And I called him. And I don't know why I had this confidence. I said, look, I don't have an attorney, but here's what I'm going to do. Here, I'm going to give you money up front. And I want to own my house. Matter of fact, I don't even want my house out of foreclosure. I want to own it. Mm. And the lady was like, huh? And I heard her say, huh, out loud. She said, huh? She said, but you're behind, though. You're in foreclosure. And... I was like, I know that, but here's what's going to happen. I'm going to make you guys an offer that I could pay over a couple months. So I built a relationship with this lady in this loan department. I'm calling her every day. Mm. We talking, 
And she's like, how much? And I said, well, the house was like, I think I owe like a hundred grand. I said, look, house 60 grand. <laughs> and I, the phone just went silent. She said, wait, so you want me to knock off 40 grand off of this loan amount and you're behind? Right. I said, well, I'm gonna put down 20,000 because I had a little cushion. I'm gonna give you 20,000 and I'm gonna pay it off in the next six months. She said, man, I, I, I like you, Justin. You know, I could just tell you're trying to make it happen. Let me work some things out. Mm -hmm. Man, fast forward, like a week later, she comes back to me and said, the bank has accepted your offer. Wow. Yeah. So what if you're not in foreclosure? Can you just call? I know this ain't a real estate uh, session right now, but if you're not in foreclosure, can you just call and say, hey, y'all, I don't want to, I don't want to owe you a hundred thousand. Let me give you 60. I you imagine know? that you could do it. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't have any steps to do it. I just kind of did it. And I just talked to the people who handled the foreclosure and, Dang, you know, lit. that's was lit. Yeah, it was lit. And so six months later, man, and actually I talk about, I, I do this in my webinar, right? Where I always show that story because that story means so much to me mm. where I talk about, and, and it's still, I have it in my house. It's plastered on my wall where it, it's a letter from the bank that says you are now officially clear of title and you officially own this property. Wow. And that, and, and so whenever I'm feeling down, whenever I'm feeling like, man, I'm facing this deep, I'm facing like this whole uphill battle, this mountain. Yeah. I look at that letter, man, I get my power back. Cause I realized, man, if I could, if I could have did it then, I could do it any other time. Amazing. So that's Amazing. how actually, um, you know, working with this, working, working, you know, so kind of fast forward and like yeah. after that, I'm feeling good. I got my property. And, and, I, last, and lastly, cause you, uh -huh. you're picking up these clients and you have this confidence to tell them um, that you're gonna pay them. What is that? Eight thousand dollars a month or five thousand dollars a month? Yeah, it was like my services were between five thousand and ten thousand a month. But I'm talking about for the bank because you wanted to give them sixty. You put twenty down, so you owe forty. Yeah. And you're telling them, okay, I give you eight. About yeah, eight. basically about yeah. eight a month. Yeah. 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 So so based on these first few clients that you closed, bro. Yeah, now you right. you just <laughs> now you got a career. It was, huh? Look, it sounded crazy at the time. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? I had to commit that to myself. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted that property. I wanted to get it out of foreclosure as, as bad as I wanted to breathe, as, as E.T. say. I wanted yeah. to, it was as bad as I wanted to breathe, man. And yeah. so that's what happened, man. Like, I always tell people, man, the energy that you put out, if you really believe it, you'll do it. Yeah. And so true. that's that's what happened to me. So anyway, I get into this whole tech space, and I'm seeing. I'm doing copywriting for these Copywriting for these tech companies. Tech companies. Gotcha. And they're doing these launches, man. These launches are doing like half a million dollars in a month. And these guys are doing, mm. you know, I'm seeing guys doing recurring revenue of $5 million a month, some of them. I'm meeting all of these different places. And I'm like, man, I've never been exposed to anything like this in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, what are these guys doing? Because mm -hmm. tech was like, for me at the time, tech was like this, you know, this thing that only the elite and you had to have 20 degrees to have a tech company right. and own it. Not really knowing how naive I was thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I became really close friends with this one owner and I made him, he had did a launch that did almost close to a million dollars in about two months. Mm. And so at the time he gave me a bonus, he gave me a nice little bottle of Cause you're writing all his- Cause I'm writing all the stuff that's making all the money. Yeah, for sure. And so he gives me a bottle of Dom Perignon, a bottle, you know, a thing of steaks. Like I'm feeling good. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling good, but I'm like, wait a second. If you shower me with all of this oh, money, yeah. how much money are you really making? Right, right. Um, and that's when my mindset started to kick in. And so here's where it changed. Here's, here's actually like, where I knew that I wanted to build tech companies is, is this. He took me to a conference. I said, can I go to one of the conferences with you? I just mm -hmm. wanted to check it out, right? Right. And I went in there and I'm looking around. It's like this event with these companies. You had to be doing at least over a million dollars in yearly sales in, in, this, in these tech spaces. And mostly they were what these was called a SaaS founders like when you software think software as a service software as a service so think about like to educate my audience okay <laughs> s a a s software a s a s, -A -A -S. so even like um, when you think about like mailchimp mailchimp you know we in these things that if like let's say if you guys are running business out there you have tools that you use you use like mailchimp um 
active campaign or you know website like Wix. Everybody knows you see right, it in right. Wix commercial. You know For what sure. Wix is. Yeah. Uh, those are considered software as a service. There are tools that people use to build things and automate things Got it. that Got makes it. life easier. Okay. So this room was filled with a lot of people, um, and a lot of them didn't look like me. It was about three of us in the room, it, right. and and I was like, why is this? And I'm sitting there listening and my, you could just tell my eyes was going up because they're like, you can build anything that you can take an idea and turn it into an, a, a, t a tech company. Um, you could do all these different things. And so I'm sitting there listening and I'm like, really? I'm like a kid, kid in the candy shop. I'm standing there like, mm. wow, really? And so I went out to dinner with them and I'm sitting there with some CEOs of these major tech companies mm -hmm. and they're like talking to each other and they're like, how much did you make last month? Oh, well, how much did you sell your last company? And these guys are talking like, I sold my last company for $100 million and $50 million and all these different things. And these are numbers I had never heard of. Like, I had come from the space where I heard people making money, but that's when my, like, next level thinking had to go up. Yeah. Where it, it's not even a, just about the money. It's like you could build something amazing. You could actually build a company, and you could change people's lives, and you can also... Um, make a lot of money in the process, mm. you know? So for me, after I left that room, I was set and I said, I'm going to figure this thing out. Mm. So you go and build a, what was it? Don't tell me because we talked about it. It was a copy. It was, it was something about like sending out emails or automatic copywriting. Yeah, or it was a right? copywriting. Well, so, so it didn't even get, it didn't even get to that point, right? It was like, what happened is, is with, with, I had worked out something where I said, I went to the guy and I said, look, I'm gonna make you a deal you can't refuse. Like that, you know, Al Pacino style. Mm -hmm. I was like, look. The guy that hired uh, you. Yeah, yeah, I said, look, I'm a, I'm a full-blooded entrepreneur. This is what I like to do. But I'm gonna commit myself to the tech space and build a tech company. And I said, um, I need your help. I'm gonna work for you for free for the next six months. Cause I had already paid off my house, I was feeling good but here's what you're gonna do for me. You're gonna show me everything that you know about the tech space. Mm. You're gonna teach me about how to hire coders. You're gonna teach me about how to hire people. You're gonna teach me about all these crazy, and, the, and that's how I sound like, what's this crazy languaging, HTML, CSS, coding. I didn't understand any right, of these right. languages. I just knew that they were the gateway to my success and what I was meant to do. And I said, that's what you're gonna do. And he, at first, he was kind of resistant, but he saw the look in my eyes, man. He was like, he, this dude ain't gonna give up. Yeah. Like, he ain't gonna stop. He ain't gonna stop coming. And so six months in, I told him, at the end of the six months, I'm gonna have an idea. And I went in and I draw this idea out on a napkin. And I said, I got the product. I need you to help me get the name and we're gonna sell it. So you didn't even, at that point, it wasn't like you had something planned that you wanted to help no, with. No, no. You're just like, yo, I just need the information. I just need the information. And you're like, okay, just give me a little time. I'm going to come up with an idea, yep. and that's what you'll help me with, and I'll just work for you for free. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even know. I just knew at that point I was so, I found my thing. I found something that I wanted to do for the, I could do this for the rest of my life. Because it was so challenging, and it was such, it was such a thing where I said, I can literally take an idea that I have and turn it into a tech company. Right. Um, and so I literally wrote it on a napkin. And so I literally just duplicate their steps. And so what they were doing, and this is even, you know, some free game for the audience, because when you have a product, one of the things that you could do, especially if you don't have a lot of money, is you can start to really build relationships. With people. Even if you're an introvert, I was an introvert, it didn't matter. But you can start, there's so many Influencers, we think of influencers of people who got two, three hundred thousand people on Instagram. Right. There's people with audiences, man, who don't have an Instagram. So you have to find them and they are willing to promote your product because they always are trying to put content in front of their audience. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that was for me because I didn't have a lot of money to spend on ads. Right. Right. Because I just spent all this money on my house and I'm like, right. OK, I got to I got to stack back up. Right. Um, I figured out like, wow, these people will promote you. They'll take my product, earn a actual commission on my product, and I'm not out of any money up front. That's gotcha. called affiliate marketing. So, so how did you? So, so tell me about the company that you built. The, I mean, the 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 software that you built. Yeah. So the the software was called Script Engage. 
script engaged. Yeah, so right. it was just a copywriting app that basically what I realized is, and that's what tech companies a lot of times are, like they solve a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And so what I realized mm -hmm. is in writing for all of these companies is that they needed 20 emails to have a campaign. Right. Then they needed a sales page, they needed Facebook ads, they needed all of this copy. So I figured out, man, look, I'm not trying to replace a copywriter, but what if they wrote, what if you just answer some questions and then it spit out maybe like 20 or 30 scripts at one time in different categories and at least made the process easier? So I'm selling basketballs, right? Yep. So I could put into this software the answers to some questions that you, you populate. Okay, what mm -hmm. is it? How much is it? What problem does it solve in your own yeah. words, whatever. You plug it in and then it just populates all this Populates copy. it all. It makes it super easy. That's dope. And it could hard to build it? Huh? It's it at the it was my first one, man. That wasn't easy. That short was like, I mean, it was like, what? It was and I had made every mistake you think you can make in the book, I did. But I was lucky to have set up this deal where I didn't do it on my own. And so I had this guy helping me. So he would come back and help me with little stuff. Uh, and the first the first time we released it, man, it wasn't pretty. Uh, but then the second time, and, and I'm not going to lie, like I had probably spent around $10,000 developing this application. Mm -hmm. um, but then I came back and he said, look, applications get better. And when you like over time, like you're yeah. not going to release an application that's going to start off and be out to the gate. Like you have to, applications get better. And so um, what he taught me was, and this is the greatest skill set I built that still to this day, like allows for me to really have great looking platforms. Uh, Cause I get always compliments. People say like, man, your site looks like your, your stuff looks amazing. Yeah, you got some good stuff. Bro. Like people always say, man, your stuff looks good. And that's because I developed the skill set of what's called user experience, UI. Mm -hmm. See, so I don't even know every single coding language. I, like I just have people on my team who are better at that than I am. But one thing I won't allow for people to be better at is how a user experience looks. So mm. I'm really good at knowing how good, how stuff looks. So that's what I mastered back in the day. And so fast forward, we launched the second time. I go out and I'm like, I'm gonna make this thing work. I go out, I go to conferences. I start DMing people on the Instagram. Mm. I'm going crazy. I'm going into Facebook groups. And I say, hey, I got this product coming out. We're gonna release on this date. I need you to promote it. Mm -hmm. I need you to promote. Did you pay him? No, no, no. I just said promote it. I'm going to give you 30, 40, 50% commission. Because you understand the affiliate Because I game. understand the affiliate game gotcha. now. Gotcha. So I realized I don't have to pay you to, to get a customer up front. I could just say, hey, I know this because I failed the first time. I know this now. I've refined, I've retuned it a little bit. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, we're going to go big this time. So we, we did a, um, I got a couple people to help me with it. Mm -hmm. We did a launch. And we did like four hundred thousand dollars in about two weeks. Really? Yeah. What year was this? This was two thousand and fourteen. Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Yeah. So you made four hundred k on the launch. On the launch. And so and that was just a product that people bought, right? That was just a product, yeah, that people the, bought. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you keep it before you sold it? Um, I kept that for about at least about a, about another year and then uh, another marketer acquired it from me. Really? So I, I sold that. How much did you make on it? On that? Before, before you sold it? Before I sold it? Yeah. I would say like half a million dollars. Yeah. So when you released it, you made 400000 Right. And then the rest of the 12 months, you made 100000 Yeah. Because yeah, that's the launch. So usually on launches, what happens is you build so much buzz, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then after that, the buzz started to die down. So you got to keep promoting. You got to yeah. keep doing that. But see, I had already had an idea that I was that that, that was surfacing in my in my head, which was what what I do now. Yeah. So I had right, already had sure. it, even though I liked the idea. There were some limitations that I knew would come with scaling that with scaling gotcha. that company. So if you don't mind, how much did you sell for? Are you like? Are you? Can I, you I, tell? I, I can't. I can't tell that. I can't tell it. Let's just say it was. It was nice. Now it wasn't like fifty million. Okay. It was. It, it was. It was. It was. It, it wasn't fifty million. It was close to. You know. It was. It was in the six figure, high six figure range. High six figure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not um, bad. Not, not, not bad. bad. And so what I did was, is I took, instead of, I realized I was like, okay, 
that was a little bit of success in the tech mm -hmm. space. So literally over the past, probably, man, it was only eight years. People think eight years is a long time. Eight years, I'm like, I done did affiliate marketing. Right, right, right. I done tried all of these things, and this is the thing that has gave me the most success. So I just put all of my time, I was like, because I had even made money from selling co online courses. Mm -hmm. And so I had helped other people with their online course. People were coming to me, like helping them to sell their information, mm -hmm. sell their courses. So I took all that and I said, I want to build a course platform because the future is online education. And it had changed my life. I mean, mm -hmm. I was a kid, again, from South South Chicago. And what changed my life was going through other people's online courses. Mm -hmm. And so I was more connected to that in terms of a mission because I felt like self-education and people learning outside of college was going to really change lives and change the industry. Yeah. So I had already had, like, in the back of my mind, I was like, that's the next company. So when I right. sold it, I chilled for a little bit, right? <laughs> Just a right. little bit. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't get comfortable. And I took that money and I instantly, I went back to my same team. Um, we hired more developers and I said, hey, let's build this idea and let's commit the next 10 years to it. Mm. All right, so tell me about Maestro. Tell me, uh, cause you're, 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 going, you're going up against the big boys, man. Yeah. So tell me yeah. about Maestro. So, <laughs> so when, you have a, when you have a great team, like it doesn't matter how much funding somebody, somebody else has. So what I realized, here, here's the thing about Maestro. Um, what I realized is that um, you have two type of companies, right? Who, when you get in the tech space, you have either a uh, venture back, what's called a venture back company, mm -hmm. right? So those are companies that have the financial backings, like Facebook is venture backed, mm -hmm. like all the Twitter venture back. Most companies, because it takes a lot to run a tech company. It takes, mm -hmm. you know, you have to hire developers, you have to hire uh, product managers, you have mm -hmm. to, you, it's more people currency than anything, gotcha, right? Gotcha. Um, then you have the tech that you have to build. Me, it's not about your like get out there, grit, grind, build. You gotta find experts. And you have, you have it to. It seems like your, your management and leadership ability needs to be on a higher level than anything else. Yeah, you, you have, you, in, in order to build a tech company, you have to have leadership skills. You don't have to be a perfect leader because no leader is perfect. Mm. But I realized that I had to get over my own crap in order to really be able to uh, bring something out of, bring greatness out of other people to build some really great stuff. Because right. you can get a developer and, and we all, some people have heard these stories like, mm. man, that developer sucked. See, for me, I realized that because of my leadership skills, I had attracted a really great leader, like developer leader who had built some really crazy stuff before he met me. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of linked up together. We weren't partners. You know, I owned the company, but he was like, hey, I'm with you up until the long haul. Gotcha. And so up until that point, I was doing everything, man. Like I was, we, <laughs> we didn't know what we were building at the time. Right, right. It was just like, we, I, at the time I was like, okay. But you knew you wanted to, you wanted to have a platform for people to sell courses or just yeah, you Yeah, no, no, no. I knew I knew I wanted to, because I had this passion, because again, I had had uh, a 10 year kind of experience with digital courses. Mm -hmm. I had made money selling digital courses. Right. Um, and actually I had, that's how I actually funded the company. So I decided, I went to a fundraising <laughs> meetings and then I started reading the stats of how, you know, people that look like me, black people, how we didn't get a lot of funding in the tech space. It was right. very hard. So here's what I decided to do. I decided, to create my own table. Right. And I decided to go the bootstrap way. And I said, the same way I got my house out of foreclosures, the same way I'm gonna fund my company and create my own table. Now that's not to say I'll never raise money because that's not true. I'll raise money, uh, maybe one day, potentially. But you didn't raise right? any money for Maestro? No, 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 right? Uh, we did have a small angel investor that came along, but that was like, you know, very, very small amount. Most of like 90% was funded by me out of my own pocket. So the way we funded that whole company is, um, you know, we sold courses and I started getting, I had to get really creative. So we would do product launches to sell courses. So, and, hold on, hold on. so you build a platform and then you create a course to sell on your platform. Yeah. <laughs> to fund. To fund the development. And then it helps with the marketing of the platform. Correct. Look, look Absolutely. what I made on this platform. Absolutely. Okay, so 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 t I, well, tell me about Maestro. Like, tell me what it is, what it what it does, what makes it special. What would people compare it to? Yeah. So you have you know other comparisons out there. Like when you think about like if you ever purchased an online course on say like fitness or yoga, like you've actually watched 
all these different components. Most people think it's simple, but there's a lot of components that go behind it, like protecting your content, logging into the site. So what our platform does is it's an all-in-one solution that allows for a business owner to actually run their business. So let's say, for example, you're, we're, we're living in the knowledge space right now. Yeah. Like this is the knowledge game that we're living in. It's the greatest, like the greatest era right now, especially with the pandemic, everything that has happened. People are sitting at home and they're realizing, man, I need to learn new skills. For sure. I got to learn new things. Yep. I got to learn behind. you or you're going to be left behind. The yeah. world is going to look vastly different mm -hmm. in the next five years. And the people who are going to be up there, are the people who have mastered different skill sets. So you learn all these different things. And so what I decided to do was to provide a tool that allow for people to make money from their course. So Maestro, what it does is it has a variety of, uh, of tool sets in it. So it allow for anybody to get up and going right away, selling their online courses, right. selling their knowledge, right? So all they have to do is literally just just like it, we've made it so super easy. Like a lot of a lot of our competitors, what they do is they make everything complicated, mm -hmm. right? So you got to have a degree in order to build a course <laughs> or you got to hire people to build a course. Here's what we sat in the room and said to, to each other. We said, look, we want anybody to be able to build an online course in a couple of clicks in five easy steps. That's what our motto has always been. Mm, it's like, like how can you create a course in five steps? Because a lot of the stuff I sign up for is so difficult. You got to go in, you got to watch 20 hours of video. So that's on top of the course I'm already, but that already <laughs> perfect. Now right. I got to go through tech courses right. and tech, just to understand the tech. So I said, how can we make it super, super easy and make these small incremental processes and systems and tools to make it easy for anybody to create a course? Mm. And I feel like we've accomplished that because we get so many of our customers that say they love it. I mean, I just got a testimonial yesterday. Somebody sent me a Facebook message and said, man, I just made five figures on my launch and mm. I just appreciate that you created this. So I like seeing wow. stuff like that because it shows me that the years of hard work that I put into making this great because, you know, when we first started, we didn't have much support. It was rough, it was tough, but we stuck through it and, and we pulled out and now we have thousands of users on our platform. Oh, wow. First yeah. of all, congratulations. That's Thanks, major. Man. I appreciate man. it. And uh, you got any, is it just you as a founder or is like somebody else from another culture behind this? No, 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 no. It's me. I'm the founder of Maestro. That's it, baby. Just, really? uh, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people can't believe that when they see, when they go to the site, they don't believe that, you know, somebody of color owns the, uh, a tech company that's, that's like Maestro. But I founded it. Um, but I have a great team behind me. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is that um, it's not just the Justin show. It's amazing people who are smarter than I am in a lot of areas who can carry everything and who I challenge as well to think differently and think mm -hmm. bigger because like you, you said it earlier, you said, man, you're going up against, you know, people who are sure. venture back funded. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we welcome the challenge and we're going to, the way we're going to beat that, we're not going to beat that by having way more money in capital. That's not the way we're going to beat it. We have to beat it by having a superior product yeah. and also going above and beyond for customers. Mm, 100%. So what, what, is, what is it that um, your customers are saying after coming from another major platform? Like a, what, like a Teachable or Kajabi right, or something? Right, right, yeah, right. definitely. Um, people just love it, man. Like people say it's simple, it's way simple, it's not clunky. Uh, that's the biggest compliment we get is how mm. easy it is. Mm. And, I, and I'm excited about that. And then we just recently innovated um, because I wanted, I'm always like, here, here's my level of thought, right? A lot of people in tech, they get comfortable. Mm. So you, when you're going up against someone like me, and I mean, this may sound a little cocky, but, it, but it's just true. When you're going up against somebody like me who is obsessed with improvements, then you have to watch out for someone like me because even if you venture back, you know, I may like, I may come up really like I, my company may grow out of control. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is think about like Blockbuster, for example, they were mm -hmm. this big behemoth and they underestimated Netflix. And Netflix at the time was a small little $20 million a year company. And they said, can you guys buy us so that we can join forces with you and create a billion dollar company and blockbuster turn them down. Here's the thing that I always tell people that Netflix did that was genius. 
Netflix didn't come out with a crazy better product. Blockbuster had the, they had, you know, they had the, they had the location, they had real estate people come in. Like that was the spot on Friday nights. Like you look forward to going into Blockbusters just to be there, right? They had it. Here's what Netflix did. Netflix was obsessed with improving things with, I call it tinkering, with making their product better every single day. That's what I'm obsessed with. That's what my team is obsessed with. Yeah. See, I remember you was launching it, and then uh, literally the other day, it was like, yo, we changed the whole thing. <laughs> we redesigned it. And I'm like, yo, first off, the first one was fire. <laughs> you're like, nope. That, you you did say that. You're, yeah. like, you're like, hey, man, that first one was fire. I was like, well, you go really like right. this. <laughs> and and, and, and here's, here's what we also changed with. So let, let me tell you this. So one of the things we realized that the course – uh, landscape has changed over the past few years. We saw it coming, which is that everybody realizes, man, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of wealth. There's a lot of um, even companies realize, man, I can make extra revenue by selling my knowledge and my expertise. Mm -hmm. So you are now, you know, unconsciously you're competing with the person down the street or people who have bigger influences. Yeah, for sure. So we said, listen, a lot of our, our competitors have solved two big challenges in the course space. Number one, if you're creating a course, you can put it on their platform and do it. Uh, if you want to sell a course, you can put it on, you know, something like some of the competitors you mentioned. But they're missing, a lot of them miss a third component, which is consumptions. So that was the thing that we set out to solve. That's what makes us different. Explain it. So meaning like... There was a study done at the University of Pennsylvania. Look, I sound like I'm about to look. Go oh, deep. he's, yeah, look, he's, he's like, like, I'm about to, to kill it all. Like, right oh, he, he, was, he was general. <laughs> now he got to go super dirty tech. I was, he's like, I was waiting on it. Let's this. go. I'm into um, that. But, it, but only 5% of people complete online courses. 5%. Mm, 5%. 5% of people. It was a study. Now, I knew this over the years, even watching from my own students. Um, mm. And so what we did was we did something a little bit different. We went to work figuring that out because we said that is affecting people's sales. It's affecting potential sales. It's making your refund rates higher. How can we solve a whole different challenge? And so we went to work for about a year researching, going crazy over the research. I mean, we were just so obsessed with everything. And it's not 5% of people buy the course. You're talking about nope. the people who actually pay. 5% of those people yep. actually complete it. Complete it. Dang. Can you is imagine that, that? Does that go? Is that more the platform? Is it the quality of information or what? I think it's a coma. So here's the thing, right? At, at the study in law, I think it's a culmination of a lot of things. I think you know we blame the users, like they're not motivated. But I also think it's response. It's our responsibility as course creators and people that provide content to make the content and make the experience as engaging because you have different type of learners. It's like it's like the school system right now. Like, I was the rebel. I was the kid mm -hmm. sitting in the class like, man, what is this person talking about? <laughs> I have no idea. And I would literally blank out. And it wasn't that I was stupid or slow. It was that I was a, I was a different learning modality. I learned different. I was the visual learner. I needed to see it. Not just a video of somebody talking. I needed different experiences to be able to absorb the information. Gotcha. Some people are auditory learners. They can hear something and be like, I got it. Yeah. I can't hear nothing and be like, I got it. Me, I, I have never. To, like, that never. doesn't work. I have to see it. Yeah, I got to so, see it. I got to touch it. So you got to yeah. see it. You got to touch it. So what a lot of people who create digital, even content, people who are just content creators, they don't know that they're losing 75 80, 90% of their audience by the way they create content. Explain that. Meaning like, like, for example, do you have experiences that set up the people? Like if somebody's going through your course, right? Do you, do you have different experiences that gauge where they are? Meaning like, are you, if somebody gets, st gets stuck somewhere at say module two, mm -hmm. do you have a system that's set up to collect that feedback and provide a, a system that actually allows for them to push through. Got okay. it. Okay. Got it. Got Number, it. Got a, it. A couple other factors, right? Is your content set up for different learning styles? Meaning, do you just have videos and you're training? Well, you're losing a lot of the stuff by not providing things like workbooks and other learning modalities or summaries that can make it easier to absorb your content. Do you have these experiences that are set, right? And Here's the thing also about another. Oh, hold on, because I'm about to. 
I'm about to drop my course. So yeah, I need to, I need to write this down. Yeah, let's talk about really like this, this is this is one of my favorite. Like, look, I, I, don't wanna, I don't want I don't want to lose this. Yeah, I don't want to lose this. Hold on, I don't want to lose yeah. this. <laughs> they um, said, I can't I can't lose no, I can't no, no, lose no. that because I because I want to as I put the course out I want to make sure and I guess now I say it I, I got to do it now <laughs> I want to be able to um, give them an outside of like the video course like the workbook or whatever right yeah so allowing them to kind of reflect or or um what am i trying to say um kind of kind of like summarize the learning summarize the summarize the so learning. you you have to you have to have things that summarize all this content because see a lot of people man you're teaching all of these things and some people it's like man throwing a fire hose on somebody and literally holding it up to their face hoping they drink it <laughs> so like you can't you can't push that all into somebody's mouth. You have to give, you have to really view your audience differently. And I feel like we have to start treating our audience in a different way mm -hmm. and really understanding that they're people, they're people with different personalities. Right. They're people with different experiences. They're not just this little dot that's sitting on your email list mm -hmm. on the computer. Mm. And Maestro kind of walks me through how to make my courses more effective so that exactly. people actually consume the course. And if they consume the course, then they'll share it with other people. Correct. But if they buy the course, even if, even if it's an amazing course and they don't go through it, they can't really tell anybody else. Exactly. That makes so so that's sense. So what, that's what we did. We, instead of us trying to solve the typical problem like everybody else has done, which is they've, a lot of platforms out there have solved the create and sell you know, courses. Mm. A lot of them don't worry about the consumption because consumption is going to make you more sales. Mm -hmm. It's going to provide a better experience. And guess For what? Sure. When people go through your courses, now they come up to you. You're the celebrity. You're the person that you're the company they want to be business with because now they've absorbed all the all the game that you've given them. Mm. So that's the thing. But if only five percent of people are completing them, and not to, here's the thing. That's not to say that people are not going to buy more because they they still buy more stuff. Yeah, for sure. But you would have a better like you have better sales if you take if you just really chose to take more of a look at the way you have experiences with your people. So like for us, for example, we know that people are into Netflix, they used to Hulu, they absor they they absorb that. We started to dive into like why why is that? Why are people look because it was an easier experience. So we changed all of our student rooms to kind of reflect like Netflix the Netflix experience, mm -hmm. and it it's a way cooler look. People go through the content even more, and they absorb that. We also added um, in our platform customized experiences. So this is other platforms offer this mm -hmm. um, that we seen. It's like. For the people that only completed 10% of your content, do you have a specialized message that goes out to them to help them push to the next part of your content, mm. right? That doesn't exist. A lot of people don't have that. So we create these things called automation experiences where we can literally say, hey, we wanna send these messages to people that only finish 10% of the course or 20% of the course or use this coupon or so we call them experiences. Mm, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. So, so how can, first off, I was going to ask you something because there's a lot of content creators or people who want to start a course, right? And, uh, kind of tired of all these other platforms For sure. where, cause what you're saying sounds, it really, really makes sense. It can help me make more money if I can help people actually get through this amazing content that I have. Mm -hmm. So do we got like a discount or something from my, from my friends that's watching let's, this? Let's, let's hook them up, man. You know, they, all right. So all right, let me ask you this and I don't, I don't know, but so with my morning meetup, I allow people to join for a dollar trial for seven days. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything set up to where, they can kind of get in there and poke around for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to do, we usually offer 14 day trial for the people. We're going to do a 30 day trial, 30 days, 30 days, get in there. And here's what I tell people. Don't just look at it as a trial. Like Maestro is a tool that can actually make you money and actually change your business forever. So in 30 days, you should make way more than the cost of what Maestro costs. So they can get in for free, create yep. their course, sell their course. Yep. For free. Absolutely free. For 30 days. You know what I like about that, though, man? Um, you are extremely confident in your product. Yeah. 
saying like, yo, if you just try this thing, you're going to love it. Oh, I mean, it was only that we obsessed about it for about four years, you know, every single day. And it's also, man, listening to our customers, like that's the biggest thing that I do. Like I'm obsessed with the customer experience. And so um, when we even, even we just launched a whole new branding and a whole new site recently, and we went into our Facebook group um, and we just started getting feedback, man. And the love was just like, man, this product is awesome, man. This changed my life. This changed my business. Thank you. This looks amazing. I can't like, that's like in, in a tech, I don't think people understand like how hard that is to achieve in a tech product. Right now, everybody's not going to like your product and that's okay. Right. But me seeing that from like hundreds of people was just like, man, it was, it was, it was exciting. So now it even has me, I was just telling my team this this morning, like, you know, I'm obsessed with making it even better. So we got some really, uh, even outside of the things that they get in this 30 day trial, that's going to make them a lot of money in their business wait until they see over the next couple months, six months, even this year, what we do to even help them. Like we're obsessed with how can we make more, not just put a bunch, cause a lot of, a lot of tech people, they put a lot of fluff. They put a lot of stuff into a product where it does this, it does backflips and it has nothing to do with what you're trying to do. Right? right. It has nothing to do with what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Right. So we said, we're not about to put all this stuff and just throw it in the product for the sake of throwing it in the product. Let's actually create stuff that they're going to use and let's actually create things that make a difference in this person's business because that's what's going to make sense. I love it. I love it. Yo, for, for one, thank you. you I mean, I know you're like super focused on building Maestro, but I want to build some tech stuff. You got to help me, man. <laughs> I just want to get in the game. You ain't even, hold on. You ain't even tell the people what I did, remember we met up, I went to the, remember that, I went to the mall with you, I showed you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you so, had the product, and I just straight up gave you some of the game. That, yeah, yeah, that so it, it was uh, it was so dope. So I'm like, yo, how the heck you do that? So I was I was wondering, like, how to put together, like, this product or this app. And he's like, yo, open your laptop. I was like, what you mean? So I, I, she's like, he, what is this little website? He's like, yo, you can see the back end of what all these companies are mm-hmm. using on this other site. Yeah, yeah. And you can see all their plugins and how they built it. Yeah. That's crazy. It's almost like you can see the ingredients of a... You can see the ingredients, yeah. And then you study the ingredients and you realize that, hey, I could do this too. I think people... So so here's the thing. People make technology and even building courses and all this other stuff. They, they make it complicated on themselves. Like, remember we just talked about boredom. Like, once you understand it, like for me, years ago, I was like man, what, what is this? I don't even, what HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I didn't understand these languaging uh, things. Now I tell people, um, I don't understand the full scope of it. Mm. I have people on my team understand that, uh, but I'm enough to be dangerous. Mm. I'm enough to be dangerous. Like I can look at code and see, Hey, this is bad code. This is good code. Like I can see that. Uh, so for me, I'm enough to be dangerous, but where my focus is now is just making Maestro one of the best course platforms on the market today. And that, and and even like now people are saying that, but I'm like, no, wait till you see what we do in the next six months. It's going to blow your mind. Is the goal as a legacy company or to get it to a point and gracefully bow out? <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll see. But right now there's no plans of selling. You know, we don't have any plans of selling. We're committed to it. You know, we want to we want to be committed to it for the long haul. Um, you know, and that's just where our focus is right now. Good, good. Well, look, man. Um, I I gotta I need you to think of a deep ending, a deep closing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give a quick commercial, but then I'm gonna come back, and you gotta be you gotta put a bow on this thing. All right, this whole yep. interview. All right, cool. So, um, real quick, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, themorningmeetup.com. Go to themorningmeetup.com and join uh, my program. So it is a. And let me just explain it to you, Justin, because yeah. it's the most amazing community on earth. Facts. And I need to figure out a way to make it. I, you know what? Maybe we need to figure that out. How I can techamize. Because right now, it's just uh, hundreds of people that join on a Zoom call every single morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Yeah, Zone. It is amazing. But then now you got me thinking, like, I wonder how I can make it even more amazing. Even though the experience is amazing. Because we have a theme for the month as it relates to entrepreneurs. 
And every day, Monday through Friday, we're supporting the theme of the month and we're teaching a different element. So people are growing in all of these different areas. Like this month, we're doing human behavior science. Love so it. we're talking the science behind sales, the science behind um, how we think, how do we become more self-aware. It's just amazing. So um, go to themorningmeetup.com and just be a part of the community. I'm there every single morning, Monday through Friday, myself. Yes, myself. This is not recording. This is not, this is not like... Um, uh, video modules, even though we record the whole thing and they have a chance to go watch it later, okay? But it's an amazing uh, community. And I'm going to do you, do, do you a favor and give you an opportunity to try it out for $1 um, for a whole seven days, okay? Just come check us out. If you love the program, you can stay with us. It's $79 a month. If you don't, just leave. It's all good. No contracts. <laughs> No obligations, but uh, join the morningmeetup.com because every time you join the meetup the morningmeetup.com, you are supporting this podcast so that um, we can uh, keep this thing moving. Okay, Dope. so um, Justin, yes sir, I have to ask you. Um, I like to make predictions on the podcast. Mm -hmm. okay? I want to know what you see yourself doing or accomplishing or where you're going to be in the next five to ten years, so that I can look back at this interview and say, listen, Justin said he was going to do that five years ago, 10 years ago. And look, he actually accomplished it. So what do you think, man? Five to 10 years from now. Oh, I already know. Talk to me. I already, Let's go. I already know. Uh, I already in my head already have the next five, 10 years already planned out. So for me, um, I see Maestro really surpassing even my own goals with you know, 20,000 plus customers, um, all just excited, growing their businesses. Um, you know, I would say in the next 10 years, um, I'm really excited about what this knowledge economy has created. So for me, uh, I've recently have, have gotten a passion for venture capital because I realize there's a lot of companies that are underfunded. A lot of people don't have the same, you know, they don't have the same ability to be able to, you know, go four years bootstrap like I have. Um, and so I've been recently really trying to, um, you know, start my own investment company and really start to help out and acquire other mm. tech companies. So my goal in the next 10 years is to really um, be heavy in the venture capital, you know, private equity space and acquire other tech companies and help grow them from what I've done from this. Wow. Dang, yeah. you're clear, ain't it? <laughs> clear, hey, don't get, I don't think it get right, no clear right. that. He's like, listen, you can uh, stop talking. I know exactly. I know exactly. I read this every morning from a four page document that says exactly what it is. Cause that's actually how I, I, I manifested maestro is like I said, here's like, out. I think I wrote some recently on my Instagram. I said, look, man, sometimes you got to see the building before it's built. Mm. You got to learn how to see the building before it's built. You got to, and what that means is, is you got to tune out the self doubts. Yeah. You got to tune out the haters. Cause you gonna have haters. You're going to have people who are even people close to you that's going to say they're going to doubt they're going to doubt what your ability is to do. Mm. So for me, I always see the building before it's built. Mm. So for me, people looking at me like oh, this kid like years ago that had you looked at me as the kid on the south side of Chicago who was fired from every job, had you looked at me in 2006 as that kid, you would have missed the opportunity in 2020 to experience this right now. Mm. Right? And so I even say that for myself in 2028, whenever it is, right? You miss this opportunity by looking at, and some people look at me as like a, you know, guru, whatever, I don't know what word they put on me. For me, I'm just, I say I'm a normal dude who realized his potential and unlocked the facets of his mind. Wow. That's what I tell people who I am. I'm just a normal dude that realized how great I can actually be. And I didn't want to get in that coffin. People saying, man, Justin was this i wanted them to say that dude was innovative man that dude not just how much money he made but that dude figured it out that dude pushed his limits that dude did everything he could that dude did the impossible from having a high school education he did what people doubted he was doing see i, so I like they I, I liked i like when people like look at me like you know i like when they doubt me mm -hmm. and i don't even try to I, i'm to the point my ego is not trying to prove them wrong my, my thing is I'm trying to prove myself right. Mm. I'm trying to prove it in my head that this vision that you have of changing the world, you can actually manifest that. You can actually do it. I love it. So that's where my limits, that's where I'm trying to push. 
And so that's the 10 year goal. And man, I'm going to hit it. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's sure. no, it's no doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. I believe you. hundred <laughs> percent. I believe you. Look, <laughs> do me a favor. So for, for the, oh, real quick for the 30 day. Yeah. Do they have to have a, a promo code? Social proof? Down, down, what we're going to do is have a link right below, link right down. Okay. They click it and they get right access to the 30 days. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So there's a link below. Yeah. Um, you click that 30 days, free trial, touch it, kick the tires. Um, make some money. Make some money. <laughs> we should do a make the money challenge. Make the money. Make money on Maestro Challenge. Yeah. That'd be a and challenge. actually, um, you know, we also, here's the thing too. Maestro Money Challenge. Maestro, like Maestro Money Challenge. I own, and 10, this, I own 10% of that, okay? Just yeah. let you know. <laughs> uh, we also got this thing, man, and, and actually I want you to teach in it. Mm. Uh, it's called the Maestro Academy. And so what we have back there is just everything is included in there is training on how to grow your Instagram, how to create videos, how to do sales pages. All this is free content. So not only do you get the 30 days to Maestro, you also get access to all the free content that's going to help you make more money. Oh, I like so that. all of that is included. Uh, even we have a training on Facebook ads. It's so like all this is content that's absolutely free. We wanted that to be a Netflix experience as well. And it's free, it's already in there. It's already in there. And it's so you, free coming with the. It, oh it comes wow! With the, so that's you a get the changer, you get the train. You don't have to pay anything else for the training. So you get the training, and you also get the technology. What else do you need? See, some people just give you the training, which is great. I mean, there's a lot of great training out there. But see, with this, it's fail-proof because you have the tech and you have the training, and all you got to do is – see, all you got to do is implement. Justin, that is a game-changer, bro. Yeah. Because yeah. Kajabi ain't about to teach you how to run ads. No, no. They're not, not a lot of they, – they don't. That's so a game-changer, like for and, and, and even now, today, we said, what – like, I told you, we, we really live by that code. It's like – what can we do to make our customers more successful? Mm. So we created more. We're even gearing up to release more content of how to create your course. So we actually, you, you made it as a joke, and we didn't even talk about this before the actual podcast, but we actually are creating a five-day challenge right Ooh. now of how to get your digital product created um, in five days. That's a good way to uh, erase me out of my 10%. <laughs> I was like, I was doing it already. You he know was like, pitching it, and I was like, <laughs> man, we already got that. <laughs> no, nah, but just, man, I appreciate you, man, um, for stopping by. I yeah. really, really enjoyed our interview. Um, let the people know how they can find you, though. How Definitely. can they connect with you? Definitely. So you can connect with me, you know, Instagram. Definitely Instagram. The Justin Burns. You married? No, nah, I'm single. You single? Single. Ladies, you can... No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't that type of podcast, but listen, hey, you might as well. They say, you know, you don't hit the shots that you don't take. Hey, man, I be doing it for y'all, okay? Brother, tech company got the green eyes and all that. Hey, man, you lit out here. All right, cool. How, how can yeah. they find you? What's, what's your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. So Instagram is the Justin Burns, T H E okay. Justin Burns. Hit me up. I'm always on Instagram. Um, and you could just hit up our company, you know, check, check out maestro for sure. dot com. It's spelled M I E. Most people spell it M A E, but it's M I E S T R O. Again, you guys have a link right below. Mm -hmm. Get started in the 30 days, get your training on. And the one thing that I would just say, even an action step for everybody, mm -hmm. sign up for the link below. And what I want you to do is, is go through the training and then send me a DM on Instagram and you know, like, give me your success story, even if you just starting off, whatever it is, and we're going to help you even get even further. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, look, man, thank you so much for uh, coming by. You are really, um, outside of, you know, you having a platform to help people, it's really huge that you are a young black man that's doing it because we're Definitely. underrepresented. In, in the space. tech space, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. severely underrepresented. Yeah. So um, hopefully somebody watching this, um, they see themselves in you and say, yo, if he can do it, I can do it too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, so. that, and, that, and that's also a part of what I want to do is inspire the next generation of, you know, black people and also people that look like me to say, man, if he could do it, I could do it. Sure. And we, and you said something that's also one of my driving forces that there's not a lot of us in the tech space and we could build amazing tech companies too. Mm -hmm. Um, we just have to stop thinking about capital as the limitation and think of creative ways and help each other. And then, yeah, we could go get capital. That's all great. Uh, but it's also about what creative ways can I do 
What skill sets do I need to learn that, you know, can cut this in half and cut this cost in half? There's a lot of skills that I have now that I didn't have to pay, you know, other people to learn or, or you know, to have to, you know, uh, push it to my company. So once we learn that, that's also driving forces to see people that look just like me building other amazing tech companies. I love it. I love it, man. Well, uh, again, thank you so much for stopping by, man. And um, um, I love for you to just kind of close us out with a word of wisdom, man. You've been through so much and you yeah. are... Um, actually uh, uh, one of the people leading the way for our community. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like your transparency. You're like, yo, I'm, I don't know everything about tech, but um, I know enough. I've, I've been in a lab enough to study it and find out who I do need so that I can build it. So um, that's really freeing for a lot of us, man. So if you could just close this out with a word of wisdom, that'd be awesome. Yeah, man. So I would just say, you know, Like some people, it's all about perspective, right? Some people say we're living in bad times. Some people say we're living in good times. Mm -hmm. Um, Choose your perspective wisely in this season. Um, In in a lot of rough times, and this is speaking to a lot of people that are out there, the greatest, like the greatest success stories were created from times like this. Mm. And so if you look at money as a limitation, you look at where you come from as a limitation, you look at your environment, you look at, what, where you're at, all these other things that just becomes what we call stories in your head that only stop you from your destiny, then you're gonna stay stuck and small. But everybody, everybody has a chance to play big. Like I say, that's one of my opening speeches on stage. I always start with, before I get started, I'm just a kid from the south side of Chicago who just realized how powerful he was and unlocked his mindset. That's what I always start with. And so if you're watching this, no matter your circumstance, no matter where you're at, no matter where you're starting, no matter how much capital you have in the bank, you have to be creative in this time. You have to push forward out of your comfort zone. You have to be able to go through extreme, you know, uh, just whatever it takes. Like that was my mentality. That's the mentality I have every day. I have challenges even now. He was, oh, he has a successful tech company, you know, with employees. But here's the thing, I have bigger challenges now Mm -hmm. and I have to approach those differently. So if you're watching this, make sure that you, uh, you have that self-belief, that you go out and you take risks and you get out your comfort zone. You don't worry about the money you lost yesterday or this didn't work and that didn't work. If man, if, if, I, if I, we ain't even sit here and talk about all the stuff that did not work. Mm. We ain't even have enough time to talk about all the failures that I experienced as a man or almost going bankrupt or the foreclosure was a small story. Mm. And so if you're watching this, I just want you, it's great to watch podcasts. They got one of the best podcasts in the game to me, but it's nothing, it's nothing if you don't get up off of this screen and you might be even taking notes from this and do something with that information because that's where you make the biggest impact. I love it. I love it, man. Can't close it out no better than that. Do me a favor, man. Uh, Go get you some social proof, okay? Go build something. Go build something. Study how you build it. Do not miss the journey. Don't miss the steps because I need you to go back to your community and teach somebody else how you did it. All right, we are out of here. Peace. Peace.